Good morning, Living Waters. Welcome to worship on this Ascension Sunday, the last Sunday of Easter. Uh, As I saw in a post this week, Ascension Sunday, I want to make sure that's right, Ascension Sunday, the day the church celebrates, the day when Jesus began working from home. (laughs) All right, moving on. All right, Uh, we've got a lot, a lot of announcements, a lot going on. So uh, first, of course, uh, happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we give thanks for, for all those who uh, laid down their life to protect our, our country and our, our freedoms, and we commemorate that day tomorrow, and the office will be closed. Uh, I do want to remind you to get those gift inventories in. Uh, the email is Heidi. lwspiritualgifts at gmail.com. Send those gift inventories in. Thank you very much, and thank you to those who have already done that. Uh, Rachel, our fellowship chair, wanted me to pass along. We will have an outdoor movie night this Friday. That is, yeah, this Friday. Uh, Starting at approximately 8.30, bring lawn chairs, snacks, drinks, whatever you want to have with the movie. We cannot announce the movie what it will be because of copyright, so, but it'll be good. So uh, just take our word on it, uh, 8.30 this Friday. We were successful in adding the bass guitar this week. Gary, you want to you wanna play some notes for us so the people at home can hear you? Oh, sorry. Surprise. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah. So those who are, who are streaming uh, worshiping from home this morning, you can now hear Gary playing bass. So that's pretty and cool. I get to wear a hat because we did that, so. <laughs> Gary did not like how his head looked on camera. I thought it looked fine. Anyway, so we have the hat. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I did send out a pastoral letter this past week updating us on a number of ministerial updates. Please, please take the time to read that. If you can't find it on Realm and Facebook, let me know. The Pride Parade's coming up, or Pride Festival, excuse me, is coming up in Woodstock on June 12th. Outreach team is looking for folks to volunteer at that. We'll also have a group going over uh, that Sunday after worship uh, just to, to go to it. There's food trucks. It's a fun time. So uh, join us for that on June 12th. The RIC task force is pretty much formed. I have a couple of conversations to go, but that's pretty. we had a pretty enthusiastic response about that. So more to update on that as we go through later on the summer. Speaking of June 12th, I'm looking for a juggler. Does anyone know how to juggle? If you know someone who knows how to juggle, let me know, okay? All right? Because uh, I'm going to need a juggler that day. I can't just, you'll have to come to worship to see, okay? Or, or stream online. I need a juggler, June 12th, okay? Youth lock in is this Tuesday into Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Tuesday to 7 a.m. on Wednesday. If you're going to that, please let us know so we can get a head count. Thank you for that. That's the St. Barnabas. Um, this week, uh, Chris, do you want to talk about the uh, conservation? Sure. Yes. There, I turned this mic on. Good morning.
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great news. Yes, I know many have toiled with that buckthorn back there. So uh, the work is, is paying off. And uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was really cool. I learned a lot that day. So uh, it's great for, thank you for everyone who's helped with that. We are now uh, doing this good work. All right. I will make this as brief as possible. So the... Uh, we wrote a letter to the presiding bishop of the ELCA uh, about the situation happening in the Sierra Pacific Synod uh, from December. And this week, the bishop uh, put out a statement regarding the listening panel's results. Um, and that was on Friday. And a lot has happened since then. The short version is the members who were on that panel yesterday came out and said that uh, the bishop's statement was not congruent with their report. Um, and so, I have been told that the Conference of Bishops is meeting this week to take further action on this. So, uh, while I posted the bishop's report on Friday, things might change by word of prayer right now, if you join me. Holy God, we pray for your power and presence to be with our Conference of Bishops this week as they discern your will in a complicated and painful situation in our church. Please lead us in a ministry of repentance and forgiveness that you have called us to. Show us a new way forward that is full of the abundant life you have given us. Give our bishops, including our Senate Bishop, Bishop Jeff, a spirit of wisdom, compassion, and justice as they work for the best for your whole church. Give them rest as they prepare for these meetings. Calm their anxieties and give them faithful resolve. Abide in their gathering, decision-making, and prayer. We also lift up Bishop Rohr, Pastor Nelson, the Senate Council and people of the Sierra Pacific Senate, the Iglesia Luterana Santa Maria Peregrina, and all who are involved in this situation, that they will be reconciled by your grace, justice, and peace. Help us all to repent from the sin of white supremacy, to revise our institutional processes that have failed us, and to show us your way forward in healing of all the pain that the saga has caused. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Amen. We'll leave it at that. We will have Growing Hope globally with us. Oh, there will be an update next week, I'm sure. Uh, we will have Growing Hope globally with us next week. Uh, Jerry and Tony Lung. Lundeen will be with us. They will be fresh off their trip from Colombia, so they'll be sharing actual ministry that we're supporting that's happening around the world. So uh, please, please check us out next week for that worship with us. That'll be part of worship. And speaking of today's, finally today's worship, the sermon today is a heavier one given the events of this week. So as always, there are uh, empty spaces throughout the building. I'm always here to talk, to listen, to pray with you uh, after worship as well. Any other announcements? this morning. All right, well with that please stand as you're able to begin worship in this Easter season with a thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism we have passed over from life to death with Jesus Christ. We are a new creation. For the saving mystery, for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for the river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, 
and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out in lush and barren places. You are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again to be your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb, be honor, glory, and praise and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord, we bow down and we worship you, Lord, we bow down. King of creation, the King of my life, King of the land and the sea. You were King of the heavens before there was time. King of all kings you will be. We bow down and we crown you the King. We bow down and we crown you the King. We bow down and we crown you the King. our Savior Jesus Christ ascended far above all the heavens that He might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as He promised that He abides with us on earth to the end of time who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Gospel of our Lord according to Luke, the 24th chapter. This is Luke 24, 44 through 53, if you'd like to follow along in the Bible located under your seat. Uh, the Ascension text, Luke 24, 44 through 53. And Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And he led them as far out as Bethany, and lifting his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord Please be seated. And I invite the kids up for the children's message this morning. We're actually going to meet here in the back. Just give me one moment. I need to grab my item this morning. So just wait for me around, around Greg here. Yeah, right here, purple shirt. All right. What do we have here? A balloon, in fact, a helium-filled balloon. So, this morning, uh, we are celebrating Ascension Sunday, right? So after we've had Easter, we've had Easter for all of these weeks, and at the end, Jesus ascends back into heaven, right? Now, this doesn't mean that Jesus isn't with us now. Jesus is with us in this place, in our lives every day, right? But the scriptures must be fulfilled, and Jesus will ascend. The Holy Spirit will be given, spoiler for next week, uh, <coughs> given to the people. So, to, to illustrate this, if I were, in theory, to let go of this string, what's going to happen? It's going to go up to the ceiling. And you know why we're back here? Because there's nothing on the ceiling. How about that? And uh, now, well, just because the balloon is up on the ceiling, is it gone? No. It's always watching over us. It's always, hey, you know what's going to happen? Let's count it down. Three, two, one, ascend. There it goes. All right. So now you can literally see, though Jesus has ascended, Jesus is still with us, right? Watching over us, guiding us. I have no idea how long that'll be up there. But that's okay. It's a good reminder that Jesus is always here. So let's pray. I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you your son Jesus Christ and for the gift of your spirit and thank you for always being with us we love you amen all right thank you for coming up this morning have a wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend oh it moved <laughs> blow spirit blow We're going to find out how flat that roof really is. All right. <clears throat> I was once on a panel of local faith leaders that was hosted by a local college campus, and they, they had us up on this uh, big stage in one of those auditoriums, right? And Students would come to the microphones in the, the aisles below asking questions about religion. And one student I remember came to the mic, shared they were agnostic, along with a brief recounting of some negative experiences with religion and religious people. And they ended their soliloquy by saying, I want to believe that there is a God out there who is good, and I have trouble 
due to the rigidness and toxicity that can result from organized religion. So I guess my question to you all is, do you think all religion is inherently bad? There was a long silence. Lots of uncomfortable shifting in the seats by us panelists. Finally I spoke because someone had to. And I still stand by what I said then. Religion, like any common binding identity, can be a powerful community and force for good in the world. But unfortunately, it can also lose its way. Religion's been used to help so many, but sadly it has also been used and weaponized to hurt others. There's a reason Jesus was always confronting the religious authorities with his time on earth. How organized religion chooses to live out their faith teachings has real consequences. God promises us this. For Christianity specifically, the fundamental difference between good and bad religion is congruence with Christ. Not that the church will ever be perfect. We do need God. But God's love and grace must be at the center of everything we do. I don't know if that answer was satisfying to the questioner or not. Some of my fellow panelists went on to elaborate about the goodness of religion. I wish I would have spoken again. And we've all had moments in the car ride home afterward where you're realizing, oh, I should have said that! For me, I wish I had this text, this Ascension Sunday text from the Gospel of Luke. For the work of religion starts with God's Word. Like Jesus with the disciples today, we confess that God opens our minds to the Scriptures. But to do what? Jesus says that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in His name to all nations. In short, that's to share the grace of Christ. Good religion is congruent with Christ, whose mission was one of grace and love, of of law and gospel, of repentance and forgiveness. I find it no coincidence that this is Jesus' last teaching in the Gospel of Luke. Just as loving one another as God has loved us, was the final teaching in the Gospel of John. Sharing the grace of Christ is congruent truth of our faith. And when organized religion is centered on this great love of God, great things follow. Just because Christ ascended should not mean that God has left the church. No saints in the building. God's everywhere. The church are the people. Though Christ ascended, God lives in us. God even lives outside of organized religion, believe it or not. But friends, when religion is truly spirit-led in the mission of grace, of repentance and forgiveness, it can literally change the world. It just might not always look the same way as it always has. In fact, I would argue in our ever-changing world, it must not look the same as it always has. We started new ministry approaches here, online, out on our land and conservancy uh, projects. We've had ministry going out to other spaces to reach people, to reach those like that young woman who asked the question at the panel who might not feel comfortable in a space like this. Christ can be reached even by the work of religious people. Though Christ ascended, God has not left the church. For example, at my preaching conference last week, Nadia Boltz-Weber, an ELCA Lutheran pastor and preacher, talked about how she used to go to our, our host church for the week all the time. The beautiful, 
a beautiful congregation in downtown Denver. As she preached to this beautiful senior, I couldn't help it but look around. The multiple stained glass windows, the huge pipe organ, the carved wood accents with great detail. And she told us she used to go to this congregation every single week, actually, before she was ordained. She gives permission to share. I'm not breaking any news. She was going to this congregation every week, not upstairs to that beautiful sanctuary, but instead to the plain and kind of smelly cold basement for Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. And this, she said, is where she encountered Christ. Not in the church, perhaps, as we all think about church, but in a basement full of people like her who were seeking repentance and forgiveness. So at that point of her life, she would never be caught dead upstairs in that sanctuary on Sunday. But thankfully, that congregation, that organized religion, they focused on the grace of Christ. They offered a safe space that was approachable to the people in their community who were in need, who perhaps never would be church people. But by doing this, Christ changed lives forever. It's very poetic to me that years later, Nadia Bolts Weber would be up on the floor above testifying to God's transformative power in a place she never dared to go. God did it again. Organized religion can be a good thing. I'm a little biased, but I've seen it. In fact, like Pastor Bolts Weber's story, the outcomes could be beyond what we imagine when we dare to do something new and we invite God's work to do new wonders and new approaches. When we make the Christ's ministry of repentance and the forgiveness of sin, the heart of God's grace, our center, it changes lives. Therefore, we can't be set in our ways. Ministry will continue to change, and that's a good thing. Because the world we are reaching is changing too. Jesus was edgy in his ministry when you think about it. So much so that the religious and state authorities of his time put him to death for it. Ministry is not meant to be safe, but rather transformative. Right in the repentance and forgiveness of sins, there is change for the better. Organized religion gets in trouble when we say that God can only be experienced in set and fixed ways. By sharing the grace of Christ, the church is charged by reminding the world that the ascension of Christ is not permanent forever. Organized religion is at its best when it leads positive societal change through God working on the hearts of the people. Therefore, this week, the church must minister. For Christ ascended. Or maybe even God gone, out of sight. Imagine what those, what those families are feeling in Uvalde, Texas this week. Just as I'm sure that's how the community of Buffalo, New York is still feeling. Empty chairs at dinner. Communities rife with grief. Many hearts broken Lives changed forever negatively. The church must speak hope into this void. We must speak the truth of God's grace. This violence and death is not the will of God. Our God transforms us. Our God calls us to change from our ways. To repent. And our God forgives us. God is not a God of of blood and vengeance, but a God of abundant life and love. We testify that in the world. A world that so often, often chooses death. Therefore, we cling to life. Bad religion is made up of people and institutions that allow this deadly 
normalcy to continue. That we're so stuck in our ways into them, trades in that ministry of reconciliation for earthly power, for political power, for a limiting power. Or we can say to ourselves, well, we can't do anything more. And like Pontius Pilate, we wash our hands of death and violence before us. Bad religion gives up while our children are being massacred. Good religion tries something new for the sake of life. Maybe you have contacted in the past your elected officials and it got nowhere. Maybe you've advocated for change in protests and letter writing. So does that mean that we are done? No. Ministry must change. And if our call as Christians is to share the grace of Christ, we must not mistake a lack of progress to be the end. The tomb appeared to be the end. The way of death had won. But with God, there's always a way forward. So too is it with us in our ministry. We must never accept that death is the norm. For God has shown us it is not, and it never will be. If our religion is continuing to be good, we must organize together in new ways. The old ways aren't working. We need ways to actually stop these shootings from happening again and again and again. The church in this work needs to have grace in our core to choose life over death, to advocate that life and different approaches that we have before, I don't know what that will look like exactly. I'm not up here saying I have a solution for us this morning, but I know we can't keep doing this. For this death is contrary to the will of God. We cannot be complacent. Together, all of us, with different perspectives and understandings, we need to pray for God to give us the moral courage of how to next to act. That must be different than what we have done before. We must combat the white supremacy that has fueled so many shootings like the one in Buffalo. Our God changes our hearts. So why does the global church loiter in calling for the repentance of sin, especially from white supremacy? And in regard to Texas, we must continue to find ways to talk about mental health instead of being content with stigmas. We need to be creating safe spaces where people can get the help they need. In a culture that normalizes violence, we must preach a different way. A gospel full of peace and love and community of coming together. We must find ways to call on both political parties in our country to stop this business-as-usual approach to our children being killed in our classrooms. And demand instead of these tragedies that they use to refund their election campaigns, that we actually come together to make meaningful change that actually works. We need to work on their hearts using God's gifts. To inspire empathy instead of stubborn pride. Both parties have been in power and nothing has changed. We must stop rewarding their partisan stances that deadlock us into a cycle of preventable death. We need repentance and forgiveness ourselves for how we have failed to solve this violence in our country. As Lutheran pastor and Nazi resistor Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously wrote, Christians should be giving more offense. They should shock the wor world more than they are. Christians should stronger stand in the favor 
of the weak rather than considering first the possible right of the strong. Organized religion can be a tremendous good. It could be. It could be the very thing that delivers us from the senseless murders. But for this to happen, we must be centered on the grace of Jesus Christ. On the ministry of repentance and forgiveness. Not to advocate one solution. We don't need one person, one idea. We need an organized religion of believers who are led by the Spirit to change the world forever. We need to come together for the sake of our communities, including our children, so that we may be delivered from the valley of the shadow of death. Where Christ ascended, God has not left the church. Our society needs that good religion in the world to be congruent with Christ, the Prince of Peace. We need a model of how to come together despite our differences. Organized religion can provide that. Organized religion can come together for the sake of grace and love and hope and most of all, life. We have gifts from God that are repentance and forgiveness. Let's share them with the world. Lord, make us instruments of Your peace. Amen. a thousand times I've tried to hear from heaven but I talk the whole time I think I made you too small I never feared you at all no if you touched my face would I know you looked into Oh
please stand as you are able and join me in confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the union of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of the resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One, Ruler of heaven and earth, wash us in Your Holy Spirit and make us witnesses to Your resurrected life in this community. Let our fellowship be assigned to others of the presence of Christ. God, in Your mercy, through thundering mighty waters, reveal Your creative power at the work of creation. Cleanse the air, land, and waters within the movement of Your Spirit and the participation of Your people. God, in Your mercy, in faithful and diverse worship, turn all towards You and Your loving will for humankind. Bridge differences among traditions and across faiths. Unite us in mission for the sake of the world in need. We pray for our ELCA leadership as they discern Your will in dismantling white supremacy in our church. God, in Your mercy, in the suffering and death of Jesus, Draw near to those who suffer, for whom death approaches. This time we name aloud our prayer requests aloud in the silence of our hearts or at home on the comments section. Hold them in the palm of Your loving hand and give them rest. Lord, in Your mercy. Inspire us through music, dance, and other arts ministries of this congregation, including liturgical arts. With clapping, shouting, singing, playing, and moving, let our bodies bear witness to the joy You alone can give. God, in Your mercy. Rouse us to remember the faithful witness of the saints who have gone before us. This Memorial Day weekend, we hold in prayer the families of all who laid down their life in service to us. By their lives and the life and death of Jesus Christ, enlighten our hearts and give us hope. Lead us in wisdom. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Sign of that peace. We will be celebrating communion this morning if you want to get your elements so we can have this meal together. Remember, there are two options. You can either have the kit uh, for taking it in your seats, or you can come up and get a kit from me at the time of distribution. If you do want to do option A and you need a kit, I think Jenny Conway is racing to the back. So you can put your hand up and hope she can uh, bring one for you. Thank you, Jenny. Or like I said, option B. I got a bunch up here. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of Your glory. In great love, You sent us Jesus, Your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened His arms to all. The night which He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. All are welcome. This time I invite you to take communion with the wafer of bread, the body of Christ given for you, and with the wine or juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you're coming to get a kit from me, you can start making your way to the center aisle at this time. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal, 
and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the author of all life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you all now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Go in peace, tell what God has done.
that you would